Astăzi m-am jucat cu un notebook LM de la Google și am pus acolo website-ul Eroi Internetului. Eu sunt surprins e puțin spus de rezultat și de ce a ieșit acolo, așa că dacă nu ați aflat până acum despre notebook LM și ce poate face, dacă nu ați aflat despre Eroi Internetului, e cel mai bun mod de a afla despre program în limba engleză ce drept, însă abia aștept și varianta în limba română. Vă invit să descoperiți ce poate să facă notebook LM atunci când îi dai câteva informații despre un subiect. Audiție plăcută! All right, so today, let's dive into something, well, I think it's super relevant for like yeah. everyone, really, especially these days, staying safe online, and not just ourselves, but our kids too. So we're doing a deep dive into this guide, and it's called, get this, Eroi Internetuli. It sounds very... Um... Yeah. <laughs> it's internet heroes if you translate yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, okay. I was going to say. Well, what's cool is how they approach the whole online safety thing. They have this whole internet hero code, which I kind of love. See, I think what's really interesting about that is it's like they've taken digital literacy, mm -hmm. right, and made it into this code of conduct, which, I don't know, it just sounds kind of cool, you know. And it's not just about avoiding the bad stuff online. It's about, like being intentional, having a purpose every time you log in. I love that. And it's not just some vague thing either. They break it down into these five principles. Be smart, be alert, be strong, be kind, and be brave. It's like a... Oh, wow. Yeah, a digital survival guide. I like it. But way more engaging. And you know what else I like? Is that they actually give you concrete stuff for each of those things. Like, for example, under be smart, they're encouraging responsible sharing. And they do this really interesting thing where they compare it to... Like, if you were talking to someone face-to-face, -face, mm. would you say that to their face? You know, maybe think twice before posting it. Oh, that's such a good point. Because you do, you forget sometimes that there's a real person on the other side of that screen. Sometimes, honestly, I need that reminder myself. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too, for sure. But, you know, going back to that, they even say, like, sit down with your kids. Actually come up with, like, guidelines, almost like a family agreement. Yeah. What are we okay sharing as a family What are we not okay sharing? What stays private? Oh, that's actually brilliant. So it's not just about telling the kids what to do. It's about making them part of that decision. Exactly. I like that. And then, speaking of being proactive, the be alert part, right? That's all about recognizing those red flags. Like, have you ever seen those offers online that are just, like, too good to be true? Hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like, all the time. Like, what? Like, what have you... Oh, gosh. I feel like I'm constantly... You know what? I fell for one of those free cruise things like years ago. Never again. See, and that's a perfect example because uh -huh. they're talking about that. They're like, before you give any personal information, it's so easy to get caught up in the excitement like, ooh, free cruise or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But take a moment. They're emphasizing critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Is this legit? Yeah, like that saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But like online. Yes, Exactly. And especially these days with all the phishing scams, you know, <laughs> like people trying to get your passwords, your bank details. Oh, that's terrifying. It is. It is. And that's where the be strong comes in, right? Yeah, yeah. Like those super, super secure passwords that you're like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to remember this? Oh, tell me about it. They even say, like, use a combination of capitals, lowercase, number symbols. I swear, sometimes I'm like, do I need a degree in cryptography just to log into my email? Right, right. Seriously. But I do think it's interesting, you know, they're not just talking about protecting yourself from like scams or hackers. They're also really big on being kind and respectful online. Absolutely. And be kind. That's the thing. That's where it comes in is how our actions online, even if we think they're small, can really have an impact on others. Yeah. It shouldn't just be like a free for all. No. Anything goes. Right. No. And that's the thing. We still, even though we're not face to face, We still need to treat each other with decency. They talk mm -hmm. about that a lot. They're really big on using your voice for good, basically. Yes. Because it can go both ways, right? And that actually leads perfectly into the be brave part, I think. Because sometimes to stand up for what's right, it does take courage, mm. especially online. 100%. And I think this one's big for, like, having the guts to say something if you see something. Yeah. Like cyberbullying or something. It's just not okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what we were saying about open communication. They really emphasize that, especially with, you know, trusted adults. If something's weird, something doesn't feel right, talk to somebody about it. So don't be a silent bystander <laughs> or like a silent scroller or whatever. You got to say something. Then upstander, right? Yes. Not a bystander, an upstander. Okay, so we've got 
Be smart, be alert, be strong, be kind. But what does it even mean to be brave online, especially for kids who might be like scared to say something? What does that look like in action? Well, I think for kids especially, it's about like knowing they have someone they can talk to, <laughs> you know, without feeling like they're going to get in trouble. Because let's be real, we all make mistakes online, right? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? I mean, I still cringe when I think about some of my old like social media posts. Ugh. Right. And that's why it's so important for us as like the grownups in the room to be understanding. Mm -hmm. Like they emphasize a lot having empathy when you talk to your kids about this stuff because it happens. Everyone makes mistakes mm -hmm. online, offline, doesn't matter. It's part of learning. Yeah, it's like those mistakes, yeah. they can be the best learning moments, right? You can say. Instead of being like, I told you so. It's like, okay, well, what can we learn from this? How can and we exactly what can we learn from this? How do we move forward? It's about teaching them to be resilient. Okay. I like that. And, you know, one thing that I find really interesting is they're not just saying, like, protect the kids. They're saying, hey, kids can be part of the solution, too. Like, they have this whole section on how kids can be Internet heroes. I love that. It's not just about being protected. It's like you can be an active participant in your own safety, but also for other people. Yeah. And looking out for others. Right. Exactly. And they even talk about, like, having kids help come up with the family internet guidelines, which I think is genius <laughs> yeah. because then they feel like they're a part of it. You know, yeah. they're not just being told what to do. Totally. It's their thing too. Yeah. It's a family thing. It's a family thing. Exactly. And speaking of like teamwork, right? They talk a lot about connecting with like, not just parents, but teachers, coaches, sure. other adults in a kid's life. It's like create that network. So it's not just on the parents. It, it takes a village. It does. Yeah. Exactly. And it made me think about how much things have changed. You know, like mm. when we were kids, it was like the Internet was so new. I feel like parents were just kind of like, well, I don't know. Figure it out. Totally. Yeah. Now it's like, whoa, we need some resources here because it's like I said, it's the Wild West out there. It really is. And the cool thing is they've clearly put a lot of thought into their website and everything. Like they have a whole section with games and activities for kids about online safety. But they also have stuff for educators, like lesson plans, ready to go activities, like for different age groups. See, that's what I love. It It's one thing to have the information, but to make it easy for people to actually use it, like that's huge. Yeah, it's accessible. It's engaging. You can tell they want to make a difference. It sounds like they really do. And they've partnered with like cybersecurity people, but also child psychologists. Yeah. You know, so it's like. They're thinking about the whole picture, making sure the information's accurate, it's up to date, it's appropriate, you know, for kids. Wow. So they really have thought of everything. But going back to that Internet hero thing for a sec, do they actually give any examples of what that looks like in real life? Like, have they shared any stories about kids actually using these principles online? That's a really good question. You know, I was actually kind of curious about that myself. They don't really share specific stories on their site, mm -hmm. which I get, you know, privacy. Right. But they do talk about celebrating those small wins, you know, like those little Internet hero moments. <laughs> like, what does that even look like, though? Give me an example. So it could be something as simple as like a, a kid sees someone getting cyberbullied mm. and they say something or like a teenager who's like, hmm, grandma, that sounds like a phishing scam, you know. Uh -huh. oh, oh. So it's like recognizing those moments of like hey, that took some courage to do that, or yeah. that was a responsible thing to do, you know? Even though it's small, it makes a difference. Exactly. Yeah. It all adds up, you know? Yeah. It's about creating that culture where people feel like, hey, I can do something. I can make a difference. Okay, so we talked about open communication, empowering kids, even celebrating those little internet hero moments. But what about parental controls? Where do those fit into this whole thing? Yeah, that's a big one. And, you know, Iroi Internet, Internet Tooly, yeah. they do acknowledge like parental controls, monitoring software. It can be useful, but they're yeah. very clear that it's not a replacement for actually talking to your kids and making sure they have those digital literacy skills. So it's not about just like locking down their devices and trying to control every little thing they do. Right. And that's what they say. Like involve your kids in those decisions. Oh, interesting. Have those conversations. Don't just like put a parental control app on their phone and be like, there you go, you're good. Like surprise. Right. Yeah. Like talk about it. Yeah, talk about it. Why are we using this? What are the boundaries here? Right. Make it a conversation. Exactly. And they're big on like, don't use it as a punishment. Frame it as, 
hey, we're doing this together. It's a safety thing. We're learning together. We're navigating this together. You know? That makes sense. So they're not advocating for relying solely on parental controls, though. No, they actually caution against it. Because they're saying, you know, technology can only go so far. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you want your kid to be able to make good choices, even when you're not there. Right. Because the goal is to raise responsible humans. Yeah, right? exactly. And they say, and this is so interesting, that relying too much on those controls can actually prevent kids from developing those critical thinking skills. You know, it's like if we're always there to catch them when they fall, they're never going to learn how to, like, ride the bike on their own. Yes. Such a good analogy. It's about finding that balance, right? Mm. Giving them some freedom, letting them explore, make mistakes, but also, you know, being there, providing that guidance. Right. It's not about shielding them from the internet completely. It's about giving them the tools to use it safely. Like that old saying, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Exactly. It's about empowering them to be like responsible digital citizens for life. Mm. Okay, so we've covered a lot. The Internet Hero Code, talking to your kids, the whole parental control thing, digital literacy. I mean, what are your final thoughts as we kind of wrap up this part of our deep dive? What's the one thing you really want listeners to take away from all of this? You know, for me, the biggest thing that stuck with me is this idea of empowerment. Like, Eroy Internet to Louis is really about, it's not just about avoiding the bad stuff. It's about, like, what can the Internet do? Like, how can it be a positive force? And I think that's a really important message. Totally. I agree. But I do have one more question before we go to the next part. Eroy and Tertului seems very focused on, like, the individual, like empowering individual kids. But what about, like, the bigger picture? Like, how do we advocate for a safer, more responsible internet as a whole? Oh, that's a great point. And it's true. Like, individual actions are important, but, yeah, there's a whole other level to this, yeah. right? Like, systemic change, we've got to talk about that. Okay, so bigger picture stuff. Yes. All right, well, we're going to dive into all of that after a quick break, so stay with us. So we're talking even bigger than just, like, what individuals can do when it comes to online safety. Yeah, it's like, ima imagine we're giving all these kids life fests, which is great, right? But what if we could just, like, make the whole pool safer in the first place? Okay, I love that analogy. Yeah. So how do we actually do that? How do we start building that, like, safer online world for everyone? Not just teaching kids how to swim, but making the whole environment safer. Well, it's a big question, right? It's multifaceted, for sure. But I think one of the key things is we need stronger laws, regulations, and we need to hold like people and companies accountable for doing harmful stuff online. So we're talking about things like cyberbullying, harassment, scams, all of that. Exactly. Because right now, it's true what you said before, it really is kind of like the Wild West out there. We need some rules. Yeah, we do. And it's not even just about like punishing people after the fact. It's about actually preventing this stuff. Like education, that's a big part of it. So teaching digital literacy in schools, but like from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Early on. Yeah. Make it just like part of what kids learn. Totally. Being a good digital citizen. Right. And it's not just about knowing how to use the latest app or whatever. It's about like online privacy, data security, like all of that stuff. Um, that's a big task, though. It is. It's almost like we need to rethink how we even approach education to prepare them for like this world. And you know what? You're so right. It's not just about like, oh, add a computer class to the schedule and we're done. Hmm. It's got to be woven into everything. It's got to be everywhere. Everywhere. And it's not just schools. It's parents. It's policymakers. It's tech companies. We all have a role to play here. So it's really, I mean, it's a societal thing. Like we have to decide what kind of digital world are we trying to build here? And how do we make it a place where everyone feels safe and respected and like empowered? Exactly. And the cool thing is there are people out there already doing the work. Like this organization we've been talking about, they're one of many. There are so many amazing people who are like developing these resources, pushing for these changes, raising awareness. But that's what I like to hear, people fighting the good fight for a better internet. It gives you hope, right? It does. <laughs> because it's easy to feel like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming, but we're not alone. We're all in this together. We are. Every little thing we do adds up. Okay, so as we wrap up here, for our listeners, what's like the, if you could just leave them with one thing, don't just think about how to avoid the bad stuff. Mm. Think about the world you want to create, the internet you want to live in. Be informed, be engaged, and know that you have the power to make it better. 
I love that. Be the change. Be the change. Yes. Well, on that note, I think that's a wrap for this deep dive. Thank you so much for all of your amazing insights. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was fun. And to all of you listening, thanks for joining us. Remember, we can all be internet heroes in our own way. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay safe out there.